Hey guys, check this out. I came across this product, Scholl Concepts. That is the name of the company. They're based in Germany. And here's a sample of one of their pads. This is a little tiny three inch pad. It's called the Spider Pad because it's got all these grooves cut into it. And here we have our test subject. 2015 Ford Mustang metallic blue. I'm gonna to try to show you the spider webbing that is present and I'm gonna be polishing right on this panel because it is the hottest panel based on the direction of the sun. And just to verify that, we'll take my Ryobi or Ryobi, however you want to label that. And we have 140 degrees. Let me pan across this hood so you can see the spider webbing going on. Now this is a rental car, so I'm not gonna take the normal precautions. And I'm gonna start out with a wool pad. If I was gonna really do aggressive paint correction to perfection, I'd be taping off these high points. But I really just wanna demonstrate the product itself and just how user-friendly it is and how it really can perform. So as I said, this paint has been decontaminated. I've done an alcohol, what's called an ISP, which stands for isopropyl. It's essentially just rubbing alcohol mixed with half rubbing alcohol and half water to remove any wax or grease or anything else to really expose the paint for all its flaws and blemishes. And over here, this is my buffing configuration and setup. I keep everything contained in here. My different assortment of polishes here that are separated by this little rack. I keep my buffer pads here. These are different types of wool pads. I've got my foam pads and different backing plates here. I like to keep them face down so that they don't like get reconfigured by pressing up against something. I've got all my different types of tapes lined up here. They all serve unique purposes. I've got my cleaning brush for like my foam pads. I've got my metal spur for my wool pads. I'm not going to bust out my uh, grit guard pad washer for this one. And then I've got my three types of polishers here. I've got the Griots, the Rupes Bigfoot 21 millimeter, and I've got my DeWalt variable speed rotary polisher and I'm start with this. This is the most aggressive with a wool cutting pad. This is as aggressive as it gets. You can see the polish on it. It's not too much. And one of the complaints I would have with Shoals is that this bottle of uh, polish, it is really hard to dispense from. Whoa, that was messy. So I put it into this self-cleaning pop top bottle that every time you pop it down, it self cleans. So this is far more user friendly. So there's my polish. Now speed setting, this will dial down from all the way down to 600 RPMs, which is very low, all the way up to 3,500 RPMs. As a rule, when I'm doing that initial cutting, I like to keep it about 1,000 to 1,200 RPMs. Right now, I'm gonna set it for 1,200 RPMs. Now remember, this is on a uh, paint that is 140 degrees hot. does not have to be as scary as you think it is. Here it's just one hand. Yes, am I having to control it? Yes. Do I have experience? Yes. So the only reason I demonstrate that is because there's so much hype in the industry that I guarantee there's guys sitting on the fence that are just, as I say, frozen with anxiety because they hear so much endless chatter about the, the do's and don'ts. So the simple answer is you just pick a buffer, you pick a pad, you pick a polish that you've read the reviews on, that you've come to the conclusion that, yes, I want to try that. And just try it. So you don't go level 10 and just lay into it. You just rest it on the paint. You set it at the lowest speed, 600. 
and you just get a feel for it. And then maybe you increase the speed to a thousand. You get a feel for that. All the while you're testing for results. So now that I've done my initial cut, which did not take long, and I'm not trying to take this to perfection, many compounds at this point would leave holograms or swirl marks. Here I have my, yes, in fact, my Costco microfiber cloth. Why does Darren use Costco brand? Because they're cheap. They're very economical. When they're virgin, as in never been touched or defiled, they're very soft and incredibly safe. And I know in the industry, there's many people that would think I'm a hack for even touching one of these, never mind being seen on worldwide YouTube as using a Costco microfiber. But they work. So notice how easily that came off of hot paint. To me, I'm already impressed, okay? So let me show you the new results. And here we have, I would call that about 95%. I mean, honestly, 99% of my customers would come out and look at this and, and knowing that I don't even have wax on this, by the way. So when I apply wax, it's even going to look better. But they would come out and look at this and think, oh my gosh, Darren, you're a miracle worker. Because if you look right over here and you can see all the spider webbing, here there's like almost no trace of spider webbing. There's probably about, like I said, I would put this at about 90, somewhere between 90 to 95% perfection for the real world. Now I know there's still blemishes. If I was to put this under the right lighting and really scrutinize it, I could still find blemishes, of course. But in the real world, impressive. Now I could force this compound or polish to produce far more holograms if I wanted to, but I don't. And if I scan back and forth, I can see slight holograms in the paint. But once again, I'm using a wool pad, 1200 RPMs, rotary polisher, direct sunlight. Those are all like faux pas of the industry. Those are all do not do this. Do not attempt this moment. And yet I can do it and get these kind of results, which is why already this product gets the Darren stamp of approval. So let me switch buffers on us and I'm going to switch to my Rupes Bigfoot 21 millimeter. At this point, my goal is to remove any trace hologramming and take it to that next level of perfection. So let's say, and I'm just gonna reach up my backside, pull a number out. Let's say right now the paint's at 90%. I can finish this paint now to within 95 to 98% of perfection with this last little step using a DA. Could I myself do it with a rotary? Yes, I could if I switch to a foam pad. But for a beginner, the DA is such a user-friendly piece of equipment that literally I could teach someone in under 30 seconds how to use it and do a great job. So just get one, try it out, you'll love it. Here I'm gonna apply basically four spots of polish. I'm gonna set this at a speed setting of four and a half. myself and I've been doing this 25 plus years and I look at this paint and it's like okay I need to go change my drawers because this looks amazing.
And yes, we've got some wind going on now. It's going to affect this audio. So let's take another flyover and check it out for results. So here we have the finished product. And as we move up the hood, you can start seeing the spider webbing. And I'm only assuming that it's showing up in film because it's certainly showing up here. And now I'm seeing no holograms whatsoever. Like I said, my customers, as a rule, would literally come out and wet themselves. Okay, literally. Hopefully when they come out, they happen to be wearing their Depends and they're not gonna soil themselves all the way through. Now, in staying with the spirit of pink correction and the, the, the endless wormhole that this subject can be, now the subject will automatically segue into fillers. Yeah, Darren, does that have a bunch of fillers in it? Did it really do the pink correction or did you just fill in the blemishes? Well, this is where I have my IPA, my isopropyl rubbing alcohol solution, half rubbing alcohol, half water. And this will remove any of the fillers or waxes, silicones, whatever may be in that polish, this is gonna remove it. And guess what? Check out that finish. I mean, dude, I kid you not, that is impressive. I mean, if you're not impressed, and once again, I don't know how much of this is going to show up. I can only imagine, but here in real life, and what sucks about working on metallics is that the metallic flakes will pick up the lighting and sometimes create this really bad reaction when you're trying to film it, but here in real life, it's like, damn, see why I love this product so much? And their pad, I mean, seriously, this is impressive. And once again, 140 degrees, direct sunlight, folks. So imagine if you're in a shop on shaded, on a cool shaded surface. I mean, I don't know how much easier it's gonna get anyways, because you saw how easily I was able to perform this in this type of conditions. So there we go. What I want to do next is do the old infamous 50-50 shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint correct. How about if I paint correct this side and I'm showing you the before over here. Obviously there's my line of demarcation. So I'll paint correct this, take it to perfection and then show you the uh, direct side-by-side -side comparison. Now, because I don't want to be a complete asshole, as in the rental mentality, I am going to take caution because I am going to be very aggressive. And maybe it is showing up, but there is some actual deeper scratches all in through here. Now, if I was really going to do, if I was really going to make this flawless, I would bust out some sandpaper in order to remove these because I don't know if these will be able to truly be able to be removed with a, a wool pad. And I don't know if they're showing up or not, but there's some additional deeper scratches through here. And I don't want to burn the edges. I want to, once again, apply or go about a risky proposition with as little risk as possible. So I'm going to tape up the edges and this is where you have to systematically break down panel by panel and see what is required for that. What you can't tell is that that first half, I was applying pressure, maybe about, uh, if I had to guess, seven pounds of pressure. And then the second half, I backed off so that the just the weight of the buffer 
and just enough to control it was doing it. And that's kind of taking it from aggressive to a little less aggressive. So let's examine the results. So wipe it off. My rubbing alcohol. With a wool pad, direct sunlight, and it's like, damn. Okay, I would put this at, and I'm not even seeing any holograms. I would put it at about 95 to 98% corrected. So we have after, and then before. Okay, now I can see a hologram right through here. Okay, so I'm gonna put this, I guess on closer inspection, I'm gonna put it more like 92 to 95% based on who's scrutinizing it. And once again, Johnny customer, Johnny average customer would look at that as like perfection right there. Now the roof A's set on a level 4.5. my cloth over so as to not have it the wet side with the uh, ISP mix wipe it off now you can see the reflection of the Sun is it perfect no it is not folks was I shooting for perfection no I was not folks but I am shooting for Really what I shoot for is 90 to 95 percent in my world because I know that my 90 to 95 percent is going to be a hundred percent for most people. That line of demarcation right here where the tape was, so after and before. And then you pull back and if the whole car could look like that section. Dope. There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room 